This is Superior Sports Talk with Reggie Wilson and Luke Inman, part of Locked On Sports Minnesota, and it starts now. Back in the lab, Reggie and Luke back at it. Another episode, Superior Sports Talk, presented by Locked On Sports Minnesota. Got Care 11's very own Reggie Wilson with me, so life is good. Happy Thursday, Reg. Almost there. Happy Thursday. Friday Eve, like we mm. like to call it. Mm-hmm. Almost there. Yes, sir. Big one lined up. We're talking where Eric Kendricks ranks in the NFL as one of the best off-ball linebackers, according to experts. Going to dive into the Twins and some more missed opportunities yesterday, later, putting Reggie on the hot seat with what does it mean. All coming up on Superior Sports Talk. Remember, follow along on Locked On Minnesota YouTube. I'll hit the subscribe button and on Twitter, smash that follow button at Locked On Min, at Locked On M-I-N. All right, to football we go. 67 days until week one of the NFL season kicks this, off. Huh? Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm committed to the bit, baby. All ESPN's right. latest article, the best pure off-ball linebackers in football. Bad news first. No Vikings in the top 10. In fact, there was only one linebacker in the top 10 from the NFC North. That was Roquan Smith from the Chicago Bears. And, you know, Reg, I know I rip on the Bears a lot on here. I just don't (laughs) think they're going to be very good this year, to be honest. But I'm actually glad to see Roquan on the list because I was a huge fan of his coming out of Georgia when I studied that draft class in 2018. I was bummed to see him land in the division. I thought he'd be a beast (laughs) for a long time. Bears used the eighth overall pick on him and... Like we talked about with Khalil Mack yesterday, sometimes when dudes get stuck on really bad teams, they just get lost in the shuffle a little bit, have some of those lost years. But make no mistake, Smith is a stud. He comes up fifth on this list and easily one of the most talented players Chicago has on that roster. Glad he's getting a little love here. You're probably thinking, well, wait a minute, no Eric Kendricks on the list? Come on now. Well, like Daniil Hunter yesterday, Kendricks was found on the honorable mentions category with one AFC coach saying, quote, Kendricks is known for his pass coverage, but finished 2021 with a career high five sacks. Still really good. But there have been other guys who have kind of passed him up somewhat. He's probably somewhere high in that second tier of guys. Vikings fans will tell you, Reggie, Kendricks is as solid as they come. And he's been a consistent piece in this Vikings defense ever since he was brought in in 2015. Rangy in pass coverage, which you got to love because in a pass-driven league, you got to have linebackers that can cover. But still, doesn't crack the top 10 here and get that exposure fans think he should get. The list kind of proves, I guess, what we've always known, that Kendricks, although solid, isn't considered one of the best linebackers in football, according to the experts. And I think that's a mistake. Mm -hmm. I do. I watched him several, almost all the games last year, I watched him in person. And the dude is just as solid as they come, just consistent. Some Mm -hmm. of his off-ball skills are incredible. You know, the one-hand interception, he had like two of them last season. Yeah, like, Mm -hmm. what are you watching, Jeremy Fowler, that you Mm put – I'm looking at this list, and it's like, okay. Like, you know, got some household names on here. But then, you know – you got Bobby Wagner on here. Yeah. And look, no no slouch. Eight-time Pro Bowler, six-time All-Pro. I think he got on here just more so out of name recognition alone because I think that Eric Kendricks outplayed him last year. You got Levante David on here. He missed five games. Mm-hmm. He missed five games. Kendricks played almost all of them. And you mean to tell me that Kendricks – doesn't get on this top 10, but Levante David does. And then this number 10, Jordan Brooks, I've never even heard of this dude. Yeah, that was Who a that? tough one for me. Who yeah, is that? Yeah, that was a tough one, you, man. You mean, you mean to tell me that Kendricks doesn't get in at number 10 over this Jordan Brooks guy? Like, I don't even know who he is. And maybe that's my fault for not following close enough. But I like to consider myself an NFL guy, and I'm pretty – you know, knowledgeable on all the teams, but I've never heard of this guy. And like I said, watching Kendricks, I mean, this thing says Kendricks is known for his pass coverage, finished with a career-high five sacks, as you said. 
Still really good, but there have been other guys who have passed him up somewhat, an AFC scout said. An AFC scout said that. (laughs) You're not even in the same conference, dude. What are you watching? Like, why would I trust that, what you said? You're not even in the same conference. You're not even watching him closely. You got other things to look at. I don't know that this person is is there's off base, there's on base. I don't know that this dude is even on the field with what he's saying about Eric Kendricks because that to me just sounds like someone that didn't really watch him last year. And as someone who did, like I'm very confident at saying this dude is one of the best linebackers in the league. And I don't think that he's outside of the top 10, especially in this category. When you look at some of the plays that he's made and the things that he's still doing on the field, when you compare them to some of these other guys on this list, I, I'm just, I, I don't, second tier? Second tier where? It's only second tier because maybe he he doesn't have the, the household, you know, name recognition as some of the other guys that get a little bit more pub. But, like, the dude is just a consummate pro, and he just gets it done week in and week out. And if you don't realize that, you probably just aren't watching closely enough. Yeah, it's the body of work, right? I mean, he's been doing this since 2015, plays almost 14, 15 games every single season and does it week in and week out, like you said. I know most Vikings fans are saying he should be in the top five, let alone the top 10. Are you kidding me? He can't even crack that top 10. Jordan Brooks was a high first round pick for Seattle two years ago. I didn't love the pick coming out of Texas Tech. They put in that card. I say, who? But I will say, (laughs) prove me wrong a little bit, 184 tackles, second most in the league last year. But still, he's only been doing it for two years. Eric Kendricks, again, has that body of work. We'll get a little bit more into it. Shout out to Eric Kendricks, by the way, who got married this weekend to Allie Cortnall. Saw them on Instagram living their best life on the dance floor with Daniil Hunter, Harrison Smith, Anthony Barr, Afedi Adenabo, all cheering them on. Congrats to the newlyweds, Mr. and Mrs. Kendricks. Eric I hope you used Blue Nile jewelry. Make your Mormon sparkle with jewelry from BlueNile.com and Locked On Sports listeners get 50 bucks off purchases of 500 bucks or more. Use code Locked On. That's called Locked On. Plus, every order is insured, ships free, and arrives in discreet packaging that won't give away what's inside. Shop stress free and find your forever peace. Go to BlueNile.com today. Okay, so. Roquan, the only NFC North alum to crack the top 10. Kendricks made the honorable mentions. So did Green Bay Packer, Devondre Campbell. But that's it from the division. Which team in the North, when you look at their linebacking unit, as a whole group, top to bottom, has the best group of the bunch? Uh, I guess you give the edge to the Packers just... You know, when you look at kind of the name recognition and, Mm -hmm. you know, just the the guys that they have and the talent that, that, you know, they've drafted there, like, I guess you give them the edge. But I think, you know, the Vikings are right up there with them. You talk about Kendricks, you talk about Jordan Hicks, like, those are two dudes that I would would put out there against anybody and and see how they fare. I think they do a, a an, an excellent job. And so... Yeah, I you know, you hate to give the Packers anything. I got to say, I agree with you, Reds. Like, it's tough not yeah. to say the Packers, right? Rashawn Gary, Campbell, and now first-round pick in the mix with Quay Walker. Don't sleep on Preston Smith, super solid. But I don't know if I'm drinking the purple Kool-Aid or left my purple shades on, but I'm just getting <laughs> awfully excited about the group with the potential of Zadarius and Hunter on the edge and Kendricks and Jordan Hicks in the middle. And as your mm-hmm. fifth wheel, rookie, Oklahoma, Brian Asamoah flying around in the nickel, I know it's a brand new defense, whole new system, going to be some growing pains, a little learning curve there. But just on paper alone, that's just... Forget about the Packers for a second. Vikings just got an ultra-talented group that has yeah. some scheme versatility to it to do yeah. a little bit of everything with Ed Donatel. You know he's going to move around Hunter and Zedarius a little bit as some chess pieces there. And just two rocks in the middle with Hicks and Kendricks always post 100-plus tackles. Back to the yeah. top 10 list just as we wrap up. Here's what's interesting. Of the 10 on the list, plus eight honorable mentions, so 18 guys in all, Only seven were selected in the first round. 
Mm -hmm. it just tells me you can wait on some of these guys until rounds two and three and find some serious talent sitting there. Kendricks himself was a second rounder. Same with the number one guy on the whole list, Darius Leonard. Fred Warner, a third rounder, uh, along with Demario Davis from the Saints. And Mm -hmm. instead, use your first round pick, early picks on what the NFL considers more premium positions on defense like pass rushers, cornerbacks, guys Mm -hmm. that affect the passing game in this kind of air it out era that we've entered. Any last thoughts, surprises, snubs, notes from the list here, Reggie? No, I, I respect the list. You know, they, mm-hmm. they they put a lot. I think Jeremy Fowler is someone that I, you know, trust his opinion and his, his football acumen. Um, he's been doing it for a while. Um, like I said, I just think that it was a it was a miss not having Kendricks on that list. And especially, you know, you, you asked me about the linebackers. I'm looking here, uh, pro football mm-hmm. focus back on June 29th. Mm-hmm. Top 10 linebacking units in the NFL. Number one, the 49ers. Number two, the Colts. Number three, the Saints. Number four, the Packers. Number five, the Minnesota Vikings. Wow, really getting some love finally. Okay, so two of the top five teams in the NFC North, Vikings and Packers. Glad PFF's finally shedding a little bit of light on just, again, on paper, the serious talent these four linebackers possess. Pretty cool just to see the rankings, get some healthy debate going. We want to hear from you. Go comment on our YouTube channel. Let us know what you think. 67 days until week one of the NFL season. Vikings training camp just three weeks away. Until then, Reggie and I got you covered every step of the way. All right, to baseball we go. Minnesota Twins, hey, It was fun while it lasted, Mm. wasn't it? Mm. Perfect Mm. day yesterday. Twins beat the Sox. Guardians lose. But apparently, Twins had to play more baseball yesterday. And once (laughs) again, we're up late after Jorge Polanco. Two home runs, three RBIs, but the bullpen failed them once again. Joe Ryan struggled again, starting to become a little bit of a trend you don't want to see. Emilio Pagan gives up two runs off three hits in one inning. But it's not even fair just to pick on those two. Jackson and Miguel both allowed runs late. Twins and Sox go to extras where the White Sox pull off the 9-8 victory. Reggie, we'll get into the pitching fiasco yet again here in a second, but fans are starting to lose their minds with Rocco Baldelli. Pitchfork Nation is coming out to play, whether it's the pitching decisions in the bullpen late in games. Yesterday, fans on Twitter thought he blew a chance to bunt and play some small ball. They didn't like his ineffectiveness using pinch hitters at key moments. Where do you sit with Rocco right now? I know we give him a free pass a lot with the bullpen saying... What do you want him to do? There's just no talent back there besides Johan Duran. You can't throw him out every night. Is he losing the Twins more games than maybe some people realize with his coaching decisions? Or where do you sit with Rocco right now? You know, yesterday shouldn't have happened. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it shouldn't have happened like it did. We've talked about this time and time again on this show. When the Twins are scoring five plus runs in these games they should not be losing these games right they score eight runs you would think that that was enough you would think that that was you saw the yankees destroy the pirates 16 to nothing yesterday Jeez. so they hit six home runs in that game mm. and and you see the the twins effort and it's like look okay like situational ball maybe you can be critical of Rocco in that regard but like they scored eight runs man like how much like how much like criticism can you Mm -hmm. give to to a manager when the bats are doing what they're supposed to be doing but the the pitching just isn't hitting like it's supposed to like that's tough man and it's it's become a point where you are just coming to accept like at least once a week it's going to be some type of heartbreak like you just saw last night or yesterday afternoon and it's just tough to watch it's tough to watch because you look at this twins team and you're like man how talented is this team and how many games would they be up in this division if they had just hold on to these games that i went to the timberwolves press conference yesterday mm-hmm. introducing rudy gobert when i left they had a healthy lead. I'm getting these updates on my phone. I'm like, wait a minute. What happened? It's it's what? It's 5-5. Five, five. It's what? 
Playoffs? Huh? They had to, <laughs> what? They had to lead five different times in this game, and you would think, like, okay, all right, we got the lead again. All right, close it down. We got the lead again. All right, hold on. No. No, that's not what happened. And you can't give a team like the White Sox comp- – like, that was the type of game yesterday that gives the White Sox confidence – and maybe propels them to maybe like you know go streaking, mm. and you don't want to see that because you're you're holding on for dear life to your lead in the division as it is. Our anchor Chris Harafsky last night was just like, "Dang Reggie, uh, are are you perfect?" I'm like, "No, I'm not." But like, when when you give them the the cushion that they have, when you give them like the the benefit of scoring all these runs, like you got to hold on to these games. And, you know, like I said, you can be critical of Rocco in these situational moments, but some of that stuff is just not on him. Like some of this is on the players just having to go out there and execute like they're supposed to. And that's just not happening at a consistent level. And Twins fans are just pulling their hair out. I mean, I get it. When stuff goes wrong, you always want someone to blame. And, you know, the person that's in charge, he's the easiest person to blame. But it's just like, man, it's blame to go around. Everybody. Everybody is in on it. Anybody can get it. It's one thing to just be bad. Just be a bad team. All right, I can take that. It's another thing to know how good you are and to be as talented as this Twins team is and just turn wins into losses over and over and over again. That's what's frustrating. After a brutal loss like that, I'm down in the dumps. You know what I like to do to cheer myself up? What's that? With Arcade 1-Up, because <laughs> NBA Jam is back with Arcade 1-Up. Boom shakalaka, Reggie. Arcade 1-Up is the place for fun. They've even got more classics like Golden Tee, Mortal Kombat, and many others starting at just $3.99. Enter for a chance to win a game console for your man cave at arcade1up.com slash locked on. That's arcade, the number one, up.com slash locked on. Back to the Twins. You want some video game numbers and not like, you know, in a fun way if you're a Twins fan. Oh, no. Aaron Gleeman on Twitter, the geek. Emilio Pagan now has a 7-4 ERA in 41 appearances dating back to last September 1st, including 14 homers allowed in 38 innings. What does that mean? Pagan has the worst ERA and the worst win probability added of any MLB reliever during that time, allowing one homer for every eight outs he's recorded. When's enough enough, Reggie? I mean, I'm all for letting a guy ride out his slump, try to play his way through a rough patch, but this is wild, man. Fans want to know, are they going to make a move at the deadline or not? And if not, what's the alternative here? They need to make a move at the deadline. Mm -hmm. But what's tough about Pagan, and I was talking to one of my coworkers about this, which is it's tough because when a guy is not producing – like he should sometimes it's just better to cut bait but at the same time they traded away taylor rogers for chris paddock and (sighs) emilio pagan so it's like if they let pagan walk they've pretty much just lost out on this trade especially for this season you're right and it's like point you got to hold on to him and see if he can just work his way out of this slump because we've seen pitchers be able to do it, but there's so much in the opposite direction that kind of shows you that, like, this is just kind of the guy he is. And it's funny because I saw him pitch the other night and uh, he got out of the inning. And you look at it, his stuff is not bad. Mm -hmm. Like, he's got some good, like, stuff but sometimes the location is just not there when it's supposed to be and he's just serving up meatballs to these hitters and some of it is bad luck as well but it just keeps happening and at some point it's like okay do you sit him down for a while Mm -hmm. do you put him in St. Paul for a second Do you, you know, because it it would be tough to designate him for assignment because then that would be you kind of admitting that you made a mistake in this trade. And you're already without Paddock for extended period of time because of the Tommy John surgery. And now you lose out on this reliever as well who was kind of 
looked at not as a, a replacement for Rodgers, but just as another arm that you could, you know, add to the bullpen after losing Rodgers. And now you lose one of those arms in a in a position that you really don't have as a strength anyway. I don't know, man. Like, I, I wouldn't get rid of Pagan unless I found a couple, like two or three more suitable replacements because – at this point, it's just like, who else are you going to throw out there? Like, who, who you got? Yeah. Here's what I yeah. think. I think it's time to seriously consider. This is just where we're at now to move a starter into the pen. Take Chris mm. Archer, for example. He only goes four or five innings anyways because he got him on a serious pitch count. But when he's in there, he's been rock solid. They've proven mm. that they have the depth when fully healthy. Joe Ryan, Sonny, Bundy, Smeltzer, Winder, and Chris. Rocco is blowing these games, turning wins into losses. If he wants to make up for it, he might need to just make a bold move like this and show fans he's willing to admit when he's wrong and switch things up because doing the same thing over and over again, like we said, and expecting different results is just becoming insanity. insanity right now, man. Good news is Twins take two or three from Chicago, could have been three or three, and are in first place in the division with no other team with a winning record. Guardians just got swept in four games by the Tigers, Yikes. so that's fun. Yikes. By the Boy, Tigers. How, yeah, how lucky are the Twins that none of these teams in this division are just getting hot and going on a tear and playing some serious playoff style of baseball right now? Still uh, early. Still early. Yep. Knock on wood. Twins get a much needed day off today, then travel to Arlington for three against the Rangers before they come back home for a nice little six game homestand before the all star break. Rest assured, Reggie and I will be here to break it all down. All right. Time has come. My favorite segments here. I'm putting Reggie on the hot seat with what does it mean, covering all the latest hot topics in Minnesota sports. First up, your newest Timberwolves, Rudy Gobert, landed in Minnesota yesterday to tour the Target Center and answer questions at his introductory press conference. Reggie was there. Highlighted in the sit-down was Gobert saying he's here to bring the Wolves to the finals. That's his goal. Something the franchise has never done since its start in 1989. After the trade was finalized, the Wolves Wolves odds to win the finals spike from 66 to 1 to 40 to 1. Huge jump. What does it mean when predicting just how much better is this team or can they be after adding one of the best big men in the NBA next to Cat and Delo? Like what's their ceiling now? So, you would hope that it wouldn't be any worse than they were when you add a, a three-time defensive player of the year and just this ridiculous stalwart on the defensive end and a rim protector, a rim runner. Like, he, he talked about, like, hey, uh, I know y'all really haven't lobbed a whole lot, but it's time to lob. It, it's, you know, throw it up there. I'll go lob get it. Lob City. Okay. We're coming. Yeah, let's, let's do that. And, you know, it's, it's interesting because Chris Finch, when asked about it yesterday, didn't have necessarily – a straight answer with how he was going to utilize it. And I think Tim Connolly just concedes over to him. He's just like, look, he's a smart guy. Mm -hmm. I trust him to be able to like work this thing out. But what's interesting, when you look at who won the finals, the only real big man that they had, like they drafted James Wiseman, but he hasn't really played. The only real big man that they had was Kavon Looney, he's six foot nine. Like, he's not necessarily your traditional big. This is kind of going against the grain here of what the NBA is moving towards with some of these small ball lineups. And they're like, look, you're about to get Cat. You're about to get Rudy. What are you going to do about it? Try to stop us. Mm -hmm. And Rudy talked about how his skill set and Cat's skill sets are so unique and he feels like they could work together because he said when he first got called about this trade or the potential of the trade he told his agent uh, give me a few days let me think about it I'm not sure and within like a day you know he thought about it he was like you know what this could be a good fit for me I think you know I think this could work and he was he was resigned to the trade. He was good. He was like, okay, yeah, let's do this. And I think he's excited to kind of upgrade Cat a little bit from just kind of a, a, a dominance standpoint. Mm -hmm. You know, I think Rudy, what Shaq would say, you know, go out there, dominate. Let's <laughs> dominate. 
I, I think he needs to go out there and dominate Ernie. <laughs> so, like, I think he's of that kind of, like, ilk. And Cat can go there, but I think Rudy is going to bring a little bit more out of him. And I think he's looking to Cat to bring a little bit more out of him as well. Like, he's played such a certain way in Utah for so long. It, you know, strong off the pick and roll, lob it up, dunk it down. You know, he's going to defend. He's going to, you know, block shots, get rebounds and all that. It was a bold swing. And Tim Connolly said, look, when we have a chance to get a player like this, it's a dream that we just turned into a reality. And I think he feels like he still has a little bit more to go. Like he hasn't reached his full ceiling yet. And I think that's going to be on Chris Finch to put him in positions to reach that ceiling, to take his game to even more of a, a higher level over the next four years so that this team can get out of the first round. I mean, he's talking finals and all that. Like they haven't been out of the first round in, you know, decades. So it's just like, okay, let's let's cross one bridge first and see where we go from there. But I think, you know, the basketball IQ is going to improve on this team. The the aggressiveness is going to improve on this team. And they're really gonna be a team that that you look to to just kind of establish their presence on both ends of the floor. And, you know, Cat wants to stretch out anyway and and you know be be a little bit of a two three guard anyway, you know, and shoot these these threes and all that. Like Rudy being in the paint kind of frees him up to kind of move around the floor a little bit and really you know get his shoot on and all that. But he's also a, a capable and competent rim protector as well. So it's just you got two guys out there that you're going to have to to contend with. But where I do look at it is if you move Cat to the four and Rudy's at the five, now you're looking at Cat defending guys who are 6'8", 6'9", who are a little bit more athletic, and that lateral quickness is maybe a little bit more than what Cat has. And now you're looking at, you know, maybe a little bit of a defensive liability at times, but I think the Wolves like their chances, so they're going with it. Yeah, if nothing else... A lot of excitement, a lot of new buzz yeah. in the Twin Cities. A-Rod putting fans in the seats for sure. So what's the real expectation? Last year was just make the playoffs. Then they get mm-hmm. in the playoffs, and they flash, man. I mean, they gave away some games, but they were up 30, yep. 25 plus twice. But you saw what Memphis did. After game one, they lose game one at home. They took Steven Adams, the big boy, out of the series, not even just the game, out of the entire series. So is the expectations just make it to the second round? If that is the expectations, how big's this window here, right? Rudy Gobert's 30, you're going to have to give and a big contract here coming up soon. How big's this window to make a finals push, which has always been the at the end of the day, the real expectation when you make a move like this. And I guess what's holding them back? Is it going to be the cohesiveness? As you said, as everybody's zigging with small ball, the Wolves are zagging with two big men is it a guy like ants progression development to the next level is it D'Lo stepping his game up is it you know contracts how are we going to pay all these guys in the next few years what's the real expectations next year and how big is this window the window is is slim man yeah, what do you rudy get, two, talked three about years? yeah yeah rudy talked about how in utah that window just closed up real quick you know they were mm-hmm. number one seed in the west that's right at one point and then get bounced from the playoffs. You know, like, it's really slim in the NBA. Like, you got to take advantage of these opportunities. What really the window is going to depend on is Ant's development. It's going to depend on how bought in D'Lo is this season. It's going to depend on Jaden McDaniel's development because now he steps into that, that number three starter role uh, on this team. And he has a lot of potential. A lot mm-hmm. of potential, but he has to kind of start realizing that and start reaching that. And, you know, Rudy's going to be there. You know, you mentioned, you know, Memphis. I thought it was interesting. I was looking at the the summer league and, you know, everybody's talking about Kenny Lofton and, you know, what he did to Chet yesterday. Mm-hmm. But I thought it was interesting that Xavier Tillman was playing in the summer league because, what he showed in the playoffs, especially against the Wolves, it was just like, oh, man, like this dude is is here. Like he's arrived like they were eating up the Wolves and they took out Steven Adams because like the dude was barbecue chicken out there. But what the 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 thing is with Rudy is he's much more athletic 
than Steven Adams is. It was weird looking at Rudy come to that press conference yesterday. You know, he's seven foot tall, you know, big man. The dude is chiseled. Like he had the the European cut, you know, slim fit suit on. Like mm-hmm. there's probably not an inch of body fat on this dude. And there's something to be said about a guy who is athletic enough to defend the perimeter. You don't want to see him out there, but he can do it. But he's a guy that you can keep out there, and he's not necessarily going to be a liability for you out there on the floor like a Steven Adams was. And so I think the Wolves are kind of banking on that too. If anything else brings a lot of excitement, I'm a little worried about this window a little bit. You talked me off a ledge a little bit yesterday too about I, I was concerned initially about the lack of depth. You give away all those guys a huge package, but it sounds like on the list of things to be worried about, maybe depth's not that big of a concern. Some other well, they guys. Got, they got Kyle Anderson. I do like so that. that. was that was a really good pick up for them and then Tim Connolly hinted I don't know how much money they have to spend because mm-hmm. it's tied up right now and and mm-hmm. all these contracts that they have but he hinted that they may not be done in free agency either interesting going to be a lot of fun to follow this team not only through the off season but of course into next season with this all-star five-man lineup all right that's a wrap back here tomorrow breaking down more twins vikings wolves plenty more remember you got to like rate review subscribe to the youtube channel join us every day for another episode covering all the biggest topics in minnesota sports he's reggie wilson follow him on twitter at reggie wilson tv and on care 11 i'm luke inman on twitter at luke underscore spinman tune in tomorrow to superior sports talk part of locked on sports minnesota for reggie i'm luke until tomorrow signing out be blessed spread love today This is Superior Sports Talk with Reggie Wilson and Luke Inman, part of Locked On Sports Minnesota.